<laughs> Shadrach me fucking Abendigo. <laughs> I'm just a goddamn faker. Hey guys, Hiccup here. And um, today I'm going to talk about some of my first symptoms I've had of Tourette Syndrome. And going from that to when I finally got my diagnosis last year. <laughs> that bitch! <laughs> I kind of feel like my story is a little unique because I haven't seen anyone um, get ticks after being dehydrated. <laughs> um, I was dehydrated on a camp out in November of 2013. I was 14 at the time. And during that day, um, <laughs> that bitch, <laughs> I couldn't really recall drinking any water. So one of my Boy Scout leaders uh, noticed that I was just having these neck twitchings. Like it wasn't like neck painful neck jerks. It was just like little neck and shoulder movements. And they're like, okay, get this kid some water. So I got to go home early and I got rehydrated. But even after that, um, my neck movements and my shoulder movements still like persisted. No one really noticed it. <laughs> Well, no one gives a fuck! <laughs> Except my mom. Um, I remember her driving me to Boy Scouts once, and I was just doing my neck and shoulder things, and she's like, yeah, that's uh, kind of weird, but we didn't, nothing really came out of that. For the most part, these were very mild, except for like, probably like two, maybe three times, I had like um, a tick attack. I just remember being in my bed, have, feeling like I had this all this energy that I need to let out through my ticks, and as much energy as I could, you know, exert, it was never enough. So I was just exalt, exhausted, and I just felt like I was convulsing, like my shoulders and my. It felt like my entire body, but I don't really remember it. My mom took me to the ER like right after one of them, and she s told the ER staff that I was dehydrated but that wasn't the case. Um, I was afraid of getting an IV, so I was just rehydrating on my way there. Um, they ran some tests. They didn't know what was wrong with me, and I got sent back home. That bitch! <laughs> <sighs> ah, that hurt my finger. I snapped, like, really hard. So in 2017, about four years after, <laughs> that bitch! <laughs> Four years after my initial tics, I started having these very subtle vocal tics. Unfortunately, I don't remember what they were, but I do remember the earliest tic that I do remember having is a who tic, where I'd like tap my chest and say who. So later that year, I wanted to go to phlebotomy school. So I remember telling the instructor of that program, hey, I have like this little thing where I twitch sometimes and make a noise. Um, that's how I described it. He said it wasn't any problem, so I joined the program, and luckily that never became a problem with um, me being around needles. I do remember working in a hospital um, <laughs> about 2018, and um, my tics were getting a little bit more severe, but not like, still not obvious. Um, I would give food orders to patients in their hospital rooms, and I remember being in between hospital rooms, having my tics, or going from one section of the hospital to another while walking, I would have tics, and I would just let them out at times when no one would see. And from the next two years or so, they got gradually more obvious, I wouldn't say severe, they're more obvious. I remember um, back in 2020, um, I got a new job, and my coworker saw me taking, and she's like, what are you doing? Um, <laughs> and I told her, I don't know what it is. I think it's probably Tourette's. Um, I was right. And then she said, no, that can't be Tourette's. You're not blurting out swear words. This is a narrative tool called foreshadowing. <laughs> So then we get to about spring of 2021, and then my takes just explode. <laughs> that bitch! <laughs> this was after um, I was taking care of a patient with cancer. I took care of him for about a year and a half, and then he passed away, but it was in a very, like, 
painful and traumatic way. So I think the stress of that kind of rubbed off on me. It made my tics a lot worse. So, <laughs> oh, bitch. <laughs> Someone shut the fucking dog up. <laughs> so I began to have tics where I would swear. I'd say complex sentences or phrases. Um, as you see, I have tics where I do the middle finger. Um, I, I have tics where I hit myself. Those all started back in about spring of 2021. So my coworkers start getting concerned. They start pretty much like every coworker I had was like, Brian, go to a doctor. So I go see my doctor and he diagnoses me with a tick disorder. And he had a misunderstanding because I told him, well, I'm having like both like vocal and motor ticks. <laughs> and he's like, yeah, that's a tick disorder. I was like, then what does Tourette's mean? And then he's like, well, Tourette's is only vocal ticks. No, no, it's not. Tourette's is both. So 2021 is um, kind of the time period where a lot of the ticks I still have now. Um, that's where they came from, 2021. So me hiccuping, I got that when I was driving home from a friend's house. My throat just kept making this noise and eventually it became like this hiccup noise. <laughs> and it never went away. <laughs> Um, it was like my throat was trying to hiccup. It was so weird. But anyway, and then anyway, <laughs> um, and then I also got that lean tick. I was at work and I was just waiting for a third shift to come in and I just lean, lean. <laughs> I remember how that's how that started. <laughs> and then that evolved into lean bitch. <laughs> So then I got referred to a neurologist, and the neurologist put me on guanfacine, um, which didn't really help. And then I got put on Seroquel. That didn't really help. And then finally, now I'm on Risperidone, and that's really helped reduce my tics. My tics <laughs> may look kind of severe or wacky in this video, but I assure you, they are not as bad as what they were pre risperidone So then finally, my neurologist diagnosed me with Tourette syndrome. Um, I've, I've heard a lot of people had to go through some like weird tests and stuff. My diagnosis, like minus the misdiagnosis, like from my primary care doctor, um, my diagnosis journey was relatively easy. I mean, <laughs> maybe it's just because I didn't <laughs> look like I had anything else that could have been Tourette's, but my my journey was not as bad as a lot of other people's, and I'm grateful for that. So that's my Tourette syndrome story. Um, thanks for watching. I hope you guys have a fantastic New Year. Um, like, subscribe, all that fun stuff. Bye.